Cheers, Facebook. I hope you're technological. I'm not even going to say what I'm thinking. I'm so angry at Facebook right now. I love technology. I hate technology. I love to hate technology. So, this has been one of the rockiest attempts I've had so far at a Facebook Live broadcast, which is really unfortunate because uh, I've been working really hard to promote this one today. And so I was really hoping for great turnout, and I think probably some first-timers have given up and gone home. I'm my own IT department. Uh, I'm my own technical frustration department. So. I'm not using my normal lapel mic tonight because I have to be able to move the camera around a fair bit uh, to get to all the different machines and do all that stuff. I'm gonna drop it down here. Zero to Hero Concepts is here. Dean Kennedy's in, Chris Johnson's here. Okay. So let me back this camera up a little bit. So obviously you guys know what the plan is tonight. I am building and giving away a vacuum former. Yeah, we're back, Jefferson Brooks, we're back online. Um, I actually am gonna throw this mic on real quick for some of the first part talking. So far seems good. Can you hear what I'm saying? Hopefully you can. So I'm going to keep track of this mic connection here and hopefully not let it pop loose like it did last time. All right, I'm here in the frame. I can't see your comments from this far back, but I wanted you guys to be able to see the table, so I moved the, the phone back a bit. Um, this is a thrift press build. So it's going to have a very simple wooden frame, a deck made out of HDPE, um, I'm going to drill it and tap it, put some rubber feet on it, build a frame. Uh, I'm going to take the 1911 giveaway mold for tonight and prep it for vacuum. And then we're going to pull a holster shell so the heat press is heating up. Uh, audio is going to be a little bit rough tonight because it's raining and the shop roof is just metal so it's pretty loud in here. Uh, which means as I move around and have to take this mic off, it's going to be increasingly difficult for you guys to hear what I'm saying. So I'm going to try to do most of the talking here up front at the table and then go from machine to machine and just show you guys what I'm doing. So last Facebook Live video was about the concept of non-membrane forming and the thrift press idea in general, how to build your own non-membrane former on a budget. Uh, all told, this build will be under 50 bucks and will be big enough to do one holster at a time, including light bearing tacos, uh, fairly longer ones. Uh, it'll work for wallets. It'll probably work for, um, it might even work for four single magazine carries at a time, but 12 by 12 is not a huge forming area. So um, the basics of a non-membrane forming system, since some of you are new here tonight and weren't here last time, you need a deck. It doesn't especially matter what it is as long as it's flat and it's impermeable. I'm using HDPE because I have a lot of it. It's fairly inexpensive and it's definitely impermeable. The deck is just there to support the mold and keep the vacuum from leaking out. So we're going to drill a center hole, put a push to connect fitting in there, put some rubber feet on the four corners on the underside so there's room for the fitting, and then I'm going to build a frame and we're going to test it. You will need uh, a mold, a split mold is recommended for non-membrane forming. I use breather mesh, which is permeable mesh which I will put underneath the mold to make sure the vacuum can be distributed evenly under all the parts of the mold. And then we have a frame, which we use to press the hot plastic down around the mold to touch the deck and form the vacuum seal. So uh, the only things that, are not, that were not purchased today, I already had my push to connect fittings in stock and I have a lot of these rubber feet because I use them for swift press builds. You could use anything you wanted on the underside of this deck as long as it spaced the deck up off your workbench far enough that this vacuum fitting has room on the underside. So you could cut up some scrap 2x4, 
you could use almost anything as long as it holds the deck up a bit. So uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and mark the sky. We're going to take it over to the drill press, drill a center hole, tap it, drill the four corner holes for the feet, and tap them. I'm going to walk over here and take a quick look through the comments before we head over there. Yeah, they're guitar cab feet, Michael Hallam. So, man, this is just not cooperating tonight. It's really not wanting to even show me comments. All right, there we go. There's some comments. Hoss is here. Greg Swanson, Brett, Dean, Gary, Robert, Kyle, Chris, Jefferson Brooks, Tim Anderson, Austin Shippey from Formidable Force. Halal, Halal Halam is in the house. Rob McCardle, Tom Kelly, Vin Truong still here but at work. Awesome. Arm Neutrality is in here. Anthony Booth stopped by. Andy Hostetter, Dan Patria. So, uh, last... Last Facebook Live video, I did a drawing for a 1911 HDPE mold, and the guy who won didn't respond. So just tonight, I redrew, and Daniel Patria, or Patrilla, however you pronounce that, you won the HDPE mold from last time. So congratulations to Dan. I will get with you after this broadcast and get your shipping address. Uh, as usual, if you're a Codex company, and many of you already have, please share your company name in the comments so I can keep track of who's who. Um, and then uh, if you share the, share the post and like the feed, uh, you'll be entered in the drawing for tonight to win the former after I finish building it. John Keller, Jefferson Brooks, Dan Taylor, Tony Kadner, Chip is here, Ryan's here, Will Silk, John Hopman. Okay, we got a crowd. 64 viewers. Andrew Hagen. Congrats, Daniel. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Um, I also have a 1911 mold to give away tonight. Um, and so there's going to be like second and third prizes tonight. So first prize is the press. Second prize is going to be the 1911 HDPE mold. Third prize will be some various assorted swag and other stuff. Um, while I wait for a few more folks to show up before I get around to drilling this thing, uh, two things I wanted to bring up real quick. I got some sweet clip samples in the mail today from Keith Freeman at Hazmet Holsters. Uh, I know he's been talking about these on Instagram. I don't know how many of you have signed up for samples. If you haven't, you should. So this is the clip that he sent me. It's thin. It's got a nice vertical oval and a vertical slot and a horizontal slot. And these suckers are really firm. I don't know what the material is on these. I haven't really had a chance to talk to Keith about it, but it seems like it's going to provide, you know, can you guys hear that? It's going to provide a very positive lock on the belt. I'm excited to try these. So if you're interested in these and you use overhooks, I would get with Keith and uh, find out about getting a sample from him. Pretty excited about them. So that's that. The second one is I had a conversation today. Uh, about customer service and a holster maker was asking what to do about bad customers and the particular case in point was a customer who was complaining that a holster had damaged the finish damaged the finish on his gun and wouldn't submit a picture to the holster maker to verify the damage and then was going around leaving one star reviews and trash talking on forums and doing other stuff to try to hurt the business and so there were a wide range of responses. This was getting discussed on one of the Codex Facebook groups. And responses ranged from go John Willis style and put the guy on blast, uh, send, him, send him horrible pictures, do things to really get after him. Um, my thinking on this is very, very, very simple. Moving on is winning. Getting sucked in with a negative customer is losing. And so if you can just move on from that, if you can find a way to move past it and not spend any extra time or energy on it, that's your best overall solution. I also recommended in this particular case that the holster maker immediately completely refund the client and not even ask for the holster back. And the reason for that is not because the client has a legitimate warranty claim. The reason is you don't want to give the client a leg to stand on to complain about your product on forums, on Facebook, anywhere else. 
because as long as you have his money and he's not happy with the product, he will complain about the product. But who's going to complain about a free holster? Um, and so if he's complaining about the product and you refund his money fully, you just give it back, no strings attached, you don't send a return authorization, you don't send him a shipping label, you just say, have a nice day, here's your money back, I appreciate you having placed an order, I'm sorry that the holster wasn't satisfactory, and you just leave the ball in his court and give him his money back, I think that's the most likely way to prevent him from leaving aggressive future negative feedback. And if all that costs you, if getting him to stop only costs you the refund of one holster unit, I call that a bargain at that price. So, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of trying to resolve customer service things as quickly as possible and as soon as it becomes apparent to you that the customer is not reasonable and is not going to accept a reasonable resolution, give them their money back and walk. Now, if I was selling $50,000 cars, my approach would be a little bit different. You don't just walk away from that kind of dollar amount. But we're talking about relatively inexpensive things overall. Walking away from a $50 or $60 holster sale versus spending hours of time trying to respond on forums, get screenshots of his posts, make sure you censor his comments on your YouTube videos, any of that stuff. If you commit to trying to censor the guy, it's going to suck up way more than $60 worth of your time. And it's totally not worth it. So as soon as it's clear to you that the customer is not going to be reasonable, um, refund and walk away. Just refund, mic drop, walk away is my recommendation. Um, so I'm going to catch up on a few more comments here. And then we're going to mark up this HDPE deck and get to work. Shared, but my speakers are messed up, says Eric Powell. Yeah. John says, I've dumped customers who've basically stolen from me. Lost holsters, lost money, lost time. I let them keep it all and dropped it like a hot potato. Yeah, there's at a certain point, you're not going to be able to get back what they've already taken from you in terms of time and money. And the best you can do is quickly and cleanly end it and just walk away from it. Just get free of it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the mic off. I'm going to talk really loudly in hopes of carrying over the sound of rain on my roof, and we'll get down to this build. If you are a holster maker and have just joined the discussion, please post your company name, and if you want to be entered in to win this press when I'm done building and testing it tonight, please like this Facebook Live feed and share it. I would appreciate it if you would share on your personal page and share on your company page. Share on any pages you got. Post it up in some groups, text a friend, anything like that. So, I'm going to pull the mic. We should be back to phone audio now. Uh, if it's not working, post comments. If it's sounding real bad, let me know. I'm going to go grab a quick ruler and a white marker. And we're going to lay out some points on this HDPE deck and then take it over to the drill press. So I'm going to put a single central vacuum port in, right on center. It doesn't have to be perfectly precise, but the more centered the better. I like silver sharpies, they mark well on this black material. So I'm going to get the drill press set up and then move the camera and start drilling.
and here we go. Hello, John Stevenson. Thank you for stopping by. Since I kind of ran out of time today, I was planning to pre-drill some scrap HTPE and make sure that this hole size I'm planning to use will work. I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway just because it would be a shame to ruin this piece. So this will be my quick test piece to make sure that the plumbing fitting will tap well in this size hole. So, I got my three quarter inch hole drilled. I'm gonna quickly take it back over here, grab my tap, and make sure that there's no funny business going on. Make sure everything looks the way I expect. So, this is a half inch by 14 NPT tap. You can probably, if you need to, just drive the fitting directly into HDPE. It's soft enough that a metal fitting, if you have a metal fitting, will direct thread the plastic itself. I'm just gonna go ahead and tap this deck when I make it, um, just for the sake of keeping it clean. Glad you could catch it too, Luke Small. Please share the feed for a chance to win this former that I'm building. So yeah, a three quarter inch hole will work great for the half inch uh, NPT fitting. We're gonna be putting one of these uh, flex uh, rotating elbow Legrease fittings in the underside of the press. Uh, and then I'm also going to ship with the press one of these straight fittings which will go right into a vacuum pump so you can connect the vacuum line from press to pump easily with no funny adapters running. So back to the drill press, let's drill the real deal deck. We got that set. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill some corner holes for the feet. Hello, Jason Craig. Hello, Tuan or Tone 2. Brian Hicks is here. Liked and shared, he says. Makes me happy. Glad to see that. So I'm going to pull this bit out. We're going to put in a smaller one that we will use. I'm going to tap those holes for the feet. Thank you. 
be right back. Just making sure my quarter 20 bolts will thread nice and tight in that hole. So I'm going to set up a compound little stop and drill my four corners. On my drill press, I really like using Irwin quick grip clamps as, uh, as stops to locate work under the, under the quill. Go ahead and throw this up here. This is not going to be the world's most perfectly squared up at the corner. That's quite the USPS shelf. Yeah, I keep a lot of boxes and stuff. This is what he's commenting on. I got all my uh, flat rates, regional A's, mediums, uh, regional B's, smalls, flat rate larges, a few other odd sizes. I find that if I'm not careful, uh, I run low on those boxes at weird times. And so it makes a lot more sense for me to just buy a lot of them. And then for these holes, I'm going to go ahead and set my depth stop so I don't drill all the way through a piece of plastic. To make sure everyone understands, this is this is a budget former. The idea behind a thrift press is for guys who think they might like non-membrane forming, but don't have the money. Yeah, okay, a little, uh, little bit of kicks for, for Jim Gedville here. I have a super Iron Wolf press that I built. Hi, Ben Crum. So this is the super Iron Wolf press, which I, I currently don't have any foam in and I don't use for making holsters. I, well, I don't use for foam pressing. I do other stuff with it, but the reason it's called a super iron wolf press is because it's really beefy, overbuilt with a 5,000 pound scissor jack on it. So if I need to smush some plastic, I can really smush some plastic. Uh, speaking of smushing plastic, I'm gonna go pull something out of one of the other presses to show you real quick before I set these feet because I'm really excited about these new AR magazine carriers and I want to show them to you. So this is a slightly scuffed up piece of plastic of the uh, matte finish Kydex, which I almost never use. Uh, but this one was just pressed. This is how I'm currently doing them in a mold that makes singles at a time, which for me is not the most efficient thing, uh, but it actually allows me to make good use of a lot of the scrap that I have. But look at that definition. Look at those crispy clean lines and the molding around those. Yeah, well, yeah, Chip, it's not gonna be quite what you think, but we'll get to that in a week or two. Um, so yeah, I, I pressed this piece of scrap matte finish kydex just because I thought it would really show the lines nicely, and it sure does. 
But otherwise, this, this really uh, smooth texture is terrible. It shows scuffs so easily. Um, but for me, since I cut up a lot of four by eight foot sheets, um, I keep a lot of four by eight stock over here, just in the corner, just four by eight foot sheets, um, stacks of four by eight foot sheets. And so when I cut those down for various projects, it's very common that at the edge of the sheet, I'll have a long and fairly narrow line of scrap. And this new press setup for these guys, yeah, extreme foam. What is my preferred finish? I use standard hair cell finish bolt around 4332 for almost everything, for everything in my line, Chris. Uh, I just like the standard hair cell bolt around finish. It's simple. It's, uh, it's recognizable. It's not anything really unusual and it works. So. really happy with these and they trim up super fast in the mill which is really fun so these will be rolling out on my website next week once I have time to uh, make up a backlog make up some inventory and get the tech locks I ordered and they haven't showed up yet so I mean I only ordered them yesterday so I'm not surprised that they haven't showed up. So, um, I've got my big Threadwell tap handle. With a wrench, you could probably drive this fitting straight into the hole without tapping, but I'm gonna go ahead and tap it because I already have the tool to do it. Um, and it's not, uh, it's not outrageously hard to do. So let me grab some clamps, clamp this guy down, I'll tap this, then we'll put the feet on start building the frame and then we'll uh, make a holster. All right, Luke, you have fun looking at that Christmas lights with the kids. This stuff is so soft, it taps really easily. down a little more. It's not really fun to look at the middle of my shirt and not what I'm doing. So since this is plastic and taps super easily, I've just got some shelf liner underneath it to keep the part from spinning. And it works great as long as I press down pretty hard. All right. Tap is out to the other side. So I back it out. We'll throw these fittings in and then build our frame. I'm loving the swift presses, Brian Hicks. I'm really glad to hear that, Brian. I was confident that you would. Pretty much everybody who I've sent one to has loved it. Which is good. That was the that was the goal. It was never the plan to sell people a vacuum former they would hate. So I just deburred those holes with my little handy dandy Noga deburring tool. Is that an HDPE desktop? It's a four by eight foot sheet of plastic on top of my table. That's where I store my HDPE before I cut it up. Hey, Justin Garner. So, 
This fitting will go right into the HDPE. The HDPE will self-seal, so I'm not having to mess with any uh, Teflon tape or anything goofy on there. You go grab a wrench and turn this in, then we'll put the feet on, and then we'll be ready to make the deck. So, if you've joined since last time I announced it, I am giving away the former. I am also giving away a 1911 five inch railed HDPE mold to be entered into the drawing for either one of those. Please like the feed and share the feed and I will go through all the shares at the end of the night and draw a name. Good old Crescent Wrench. All right, now the quick and dirty way to put these rubber feet on. I'm just gonna power drive them. I'm gonna quickly chamfer the four holes so the screws can thread in easily. And then we're just going to slam these in here. Like I said earlier, you could use absolutely anything um, as long as it stands the deck far enough off of the table that there's room for the fitting. There's our deck. Deck is done. Ready to go. Uh, so now for the frame. I published a picture on my Instagram of some uh, some fairly narrow uh, poplar boards at, at uh, Menards, which is my local hardware store. And so I just went ahead and bought a piece. Uh, it's this guy. It's just inexpensive. This was like this piece was like four bucks. Um, I'm going to take it to the bandsaw, cut it into four equal sections, and then we're going to use some L brackets to attach it to itself at the corners. 104 viewers! We broke 100! The goal tonight is 150! So I've got these small uh, National Hardware L brackets. These were uh, inexpensive. And we're just going to use these to make a semi-adjustable frame. It, you'll have to pull screws and then scale the frame. It'll basically be like a swift press frame overlapping at the four corners. Jonathan Hayton, where have you been? We are making a non-membrane vacuum forming machine, a very small one called a thrift press. So, real quick to come up with our dimensions. My wood is three quarter thick since it's called one inch. And my deck is just under 12 inches. So we're gonna go ahead and cut four pieces at 11 inches and then go ahead and assemble the frame. So, here we go, over to the saw. Thank you. 
Set the saw to 11 inches. And those cuts really don't need to be super square or precise because they're just gonna be butt joints where the one, one piece runs into the side of the other. So here's the basic layout. It's gonna be like a swift press frame. Just like that, overlapping. And then we're just gonna drop these L brackets onto each corner and stitch it together. Uh, it will be able to be assembled all the way out to the full size of the deck if you had parts that were to take up the whole table. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and grab the mold we're actually going to use, and then we're going to uh, set the initial frame up at that size that I want to use with that mold. So here's the mold. It's a 1911 5-inch uh, set up the way I would make it for a custom. It's got my concealment wedge blocking on it. It's got blocking for a single loop. It's got marking holes for a strut. It's got a flat insert in the trigger guard to adjust the retention. At the end of the night, when I'm done with this holster, I'll be giving away the holster too. So if you're a 1911 guy, first of all, I don't know how you got to my page if you're a 1911 guy, but welcome. And uh, share the feed if you want to win the holster. So I'm going to quickly scale the frame roughly to the size of my, uh, of my mold. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is not super complicated stuff. We just need to have... Um, enough room to get the plastic down. Because I'm working with wood and I don't want it to split, I am going to quickly pre-drill these holes. And then use the short screws that were included with the corner brackets. The goal here is not beauty, the goal is speed. The frame does not need to be perfectly square. It only needs to be roughly square-ish. Jonathan Hayton says, I got here from Renaissance Firearms. Didn't know what it was, but I stopped in to watch. Think I'll stick around and see this one through. Appreciate it, Jonathan. Thank you for stopping by. Especially if you're not familiar with my stuff and have not seen my feed before, I especially appreciate you taking time. So, almost done here with the frame. 
and, and then we'll go take it over and plug it into my vacuum pump and form a holster with it. All right, so I've got my L brackets on all the parts. Now I'm gonna actually line them up and then drill the last single connector hole on each one that will lock the frame together. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be close. Alright, so the actual thrift press build is now complete. We're going to take it over to the vacuum forming station, we're going to plug it into the pump, we're going to heat some plastic, and we're going to make a 1911 holster. Here's our piece of plastic, it's 10 by 10 inch. I'm going to put a piece of pre-cut breather mesh under this mold. I don't know if you can see, the mesh is undersized, not quite as large as the mold. We'll lay that on there. I'm going to go ahead and... Disconnect my large swift press and plug this small one in. This is the piece of vacuum line that I'm going to supply with the press in the giveaway. Let me check some comments here real quick. A lot of comments, 156. Dude, we broke 150 viewers. 200 people and only a quarter know what's going on, says Rick. Yeah, well, you know, that's reality. 200, I'm excited, 200 is awesome. That's the best live viewing I've ever had. So, uh, right now over here, my heat press is cycling, getting everything warmed up. I am going to uh, make sure my pump is on. I'm definitely getting vacuum there. I've got my mold. I dropped my mesh somewhere. Oh, here we go. Here's the breather mesh. I think, I think we're pretty much good to go here. So let's throw this plastic in and start rocking and rolling. I like to heat at 365 or 370 for a minute 50, which is what this is set for right now. I can't say enough good things about this heat press. This is a Geonite K20, and it's been absolutely awesome. The heat is actually correct according to the temperature. When I IR thermometer it, it's actually accurate, and the heat is really consistent. And my sister Maureen just joined. Hi, Maureen. Thank you for stopping by. Late to the party, but here now, says Mick Tucker. Glad you made it. 
Like the feed, share the feed. I'm giving away the former, I'm giving away a mold, and I'm also giving away this holster after I finish it. So, for those of you not familiar with the Swift Press, Thrift Press workflow, I'm gonna pull a hot sheet of plastic out of here. I'm gonna lay it on top of my mold. I'm gonna take our handy dandy frame we've just been building, and I'm gonna drop it over the mold and press the plastic down, forcing it to suck into shape on the mold. Then we'll cool it, and then we'll cut the holster up and fold it up, and maybe if I'm feeling like it, we'll hang around long enough to actually uh, finish out the whole holster during the live feed, which I think would be fun. So, 28 seconds left, double checking, I've got my mesh, I've got my mold, I've got my frame. The frame is not square, it's rectangular, so I gotta make sure it's oriented correctly, it is. I got my gloves. That cooling fan, yeah, I just rigged this up. I had another one of these, I don't know, 600 CF, it, it moves a lot of air, uh, and it's pointed right at my deck, which is really nice. All right, there's the timer. Since I don't, yeah, the holster is going to get given to a non-maker. Uh, if you win the holster and you're a maker, I'm going to redraw it. So, um, since I'm at 365, I can just leave this here for, for an extra 20 or 30 seconds. And it's not going to, uh, not going to damage it. Clifford Lee says, I need a 1911 holster. Well, Clifford Lee, share the feed and you will be entered in to win this 1911 holster. Do it, I wanna see your CNC gear. Uh, Greg, this holster will get made without any CNC gear. This is gonna be a manual one. All right, here we go. Pump is on. Oh, oh come on. Well, something is not working. Ah, I slid the breather mesh. Let's try that again real quick. It's what I get. I bumped it and slid the breather mesh under my frame. So we're going to reheat that again real quick. If it's still a no-go, I'm going to cut a much larger piece of plastic just to make sure that we get it clean. It's really frustrating that notifications on my phone clog it up. Ah, da, da, da. Get it out of here. 225 viewers right now. That is awesome. To all you 221 people, thank you very much for stopping by and watching. This is the Henry Holster Shop. I make thermoformed, vacuum formed holsters. Greg Swanson says sad face. I don't know why sad face. Live feed failed. Guys, this is real life. Like I don't get it all right all the time. I just built a former. I've never used this little former before. Stuff can go wrong. It's the way it happens. There we go. Got a good lay down. Boom. Like that. Look at that crispy, crispy definition. Thrift press. Like a boss. So normally I would use my fan, but the sides of this frame are so high that it's going to block the air. Thrift press holster shell. Looking beautiful. Look at that lovely definition. Okay? I mean, this is, this is just what happens. Like, stuff goes wrong. So, so Rick, I think the reason I don't lose my mind in front of 250 people is because I was a school teacher, and I'm also a classical musician, and I've played solos in front of thousands of people. So you make mistakes then, you make mistakes here. Stuff just happens, it's life. So, I just dropped the uh, freshly made shell on my little cooling rig down here. I've got another one of those air blowers. We're gonna give that two minutes to cool all the way down. In the meantime, I'm gonna prep the hardware for that holster, and then we'll get to, uh, get to making it. 
So here's my hardware and assembly table. Uh, it's a little bit of a mess right now because I was playing with a bunch of stuff today. Um, you guys can see all right. So I keep a little cabinet here that's got all my standard hardware in it. And uh, this holster is going to get assembled with soft loops. It will take one on a strut and one without. I have my own soft loops. I buy them by the thousand and set all my own snaps. They're biothane, uh, which is the industry standard. Um, screw posts, rubber spacers. I really like these number five head. 3 8 inch screws from Index Faster. I use those with all my soft loops. Hi, Jim Vickers. Thanks, Jonathan, for sticking around. Gray Wolf Woodworks. How do you order? Uh, depends what you want to order. If you're looking to order a holster, a standard holster, Gray Wolf, go to henryholsters.com. Uh, this particular holster I'm making tonight for the demo is a one-off, and it's not available on my website. So, so if you want to win this one, Share the feed, and I'll be giving away this 1911 holster. Um, let me grab a strut. I'm going to cut it on the bandsaw real quick and then clean up the end since these struts come a little bit long. Got to go to a friend to track the bike. Ooh, Cody, hope your friend is okay. Uh, I'm kind of old school. I still use the old holster loop struts. They work fine for me. I always trim off the bottom hole because my holsters are cut to only have two attachment points. How do you order the molds? Matt, molds are custom only. You have to order them through via phone and email conversation with me. Uh, they're such a non-standard item. Every single mold is different. Uh, for all the different companies I make for, yeah, the basic HDPE molds are in stock at pistolforms.com. My full custom molds are only able to be ordered via email. So I trim off the toe on that. Hi Silas Nunn. Bring it over here to my oscillating spindle sander. I'm going to change out the drum to something a little more aggressive. So that's all it takes to get a nice clean rounded shape. I got some fuzz on that. We're going to polish this off with the 3M flap wheel. This guy over here. That's done. Nice and rounded. I'm gonna set some eyelets in it real quick. Hello, Taylor Bailey. I can't hear you. One second. So I'm going to set some quick eyelets here. Tony Pizzagelli. Never seen this before. Really cool. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by, Tony. Eyelets are set. They're beautiful. Nothing split because I use good dyes. And uh, over here and throw a loop on here.
And here's the John Hopman tri trick for loosening up, because I use the mill spec pull the dot snap loops, which are quite tight. If your hand's tired, close them with pliers with taped jaws so you don't scratch the loops. Then take a flathead screwdriver, put it in the snap on the side, and rotate it slightly against the direction of the pull the dot. Let's show this. Rotate it that way, and it will lighten the loop up. What's the press you use to set the eyelets? We walk over there, Brett, and show you. Rosingle, Brad Rosingle. I don't suppose you own the Cross Country Ski Company. I used to use Rosingle skis. Uh, this is a one-ton Arbor Press. I got it from Harbor Freight. Uh, it came kind of messy. I had to clean it up, sand it down in a few spots. The ram was not drilled to accept dies, so I took it to my local machine shop at the time and paid one of the operators a bottle of Jameson uh, to drill out the ram and tap it for a set screw. I have Cisco brand eyelet dies in there. They're about 150 bucks a pop, but they are phenomenal. Hands down the best eyelet dies on the market right now. Uh, I've set thousands and thousands of eyelets um, with single digit numbers of split ones in that entire time. Hello, MJ. So my phone's running low on battery because I was out of the house all afternoon doing stuff. Gonna get plugged in here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my strip heater. Yeah, a bottle of Jameson. He was happy. I was happy. I got the work done. He got a bottle of Jameson. It worked out great for everybody. Hi, Joey. Thank you for stopping in. I'm going to fire up my strip heater. And I'm going to go grab that holster shell off the mold and uh, show you what's going on with the Jim Vickers. The website is henryholsters.com. You are new, Joey. Welcome for the third time. Real life is messy and my shop is messy. My shop must be real life. All right, I'm gonna go grab that holster shell. I'll be right back. This has been amazing. Thank you, Paul Schultz, for stopping in. So here's the holster shell we formed a little while ago. Still on the mold. I'm gonna show you how to get it out. Is that a tanning bed or a strip heater? Uh, Michael, it can be both, depending on how, uh, on how ambitious you are. Really just depends what you're up for that day. So I've showed guys this before. This is my a uh, highly technical method for getting holster shells off the mold. Turn this down a little bit. Everybody can see this? This is how I do it. You see there's a kydex edge out here beyond the mold? Hit that on the bench. That's it. Okay. Just like that, we're off. That little shim came loose because it's not taped in. But the holster shell is done. So you can see on the inside, 
the definition that was pulled on that thrift press is pretty great. Uh, you can see every little tape mark right here. Most of those will come out in the folding process. Um, the definition, though, is really clean on this. You thought you were the only one that did what? Slam the molds around? I do that all the time. They're plastic. They're not going to crack. They don't chip. That's one of the big advantages of the HDPE. As long as you don't get them too hot, you can slam them around and they're totally impervious to it. It doesn't bother them at all. Getting warm, getting warm. So uh, I just came to a realization. This is the really stupid part. It's been a really busy day and I did not think this through. Uh, I don't actually have a 1911 in the shop right now, which is totally dumb. Tape blocking, I'll never miss that, says Ryan Brad. Greg Swanson's got to run. Thank you for stopping in, Greg. FBI says ISIS is going to attack U.S. churches this Sunday. Well, I hope that you will all, as usual, be vigilant. Tony, I taught myself how to do this, mostly. So there's our roughed in holster shell shape. This is actually very close to the final because the mold has some marks that will show where the magazine release button is. And I know just what to cut around to get the clearance I need. Um, I have my drill indicator marks there. Hang on. I'm getting alerts on my screen which are covering up what the camera shows so I can't see if you guys are seeing it or not. All right, can't hold this. I've got my uh, drill indicator marks. You can see them right there in the light right there uh, that I would drill out and then would use after I fold it, I'd use the initial hole uh, to drill the matching hole on the other side. Um, but unfortunately, without the blade sounds like a jet engine jelly. It's a pretty standard 14 inch bandsaw. Um, but yeah, this was this was poor planning on my part. I don't have a 1911 here right now, so I actually can't fold this holster. Um, and finish it out, which is unfortunate. It was a pretty ambitious live feed. I knew something had to go wrong. I didn't think about uh, that, because when I had this mold prepped up last week, it was for a couple of custom 1911 molds, 1911 holsters, and I had the gun in the shop because the owner brought it. And uh, I totally forgot that that gun's not here right now. So, don't have that. Let me get what gun belongs to the holster? It'll fit any Colt or Springfield model, 1911, five inch railed. Uh, it'll fit some four inch railed and unrailed guns. There aren't very many four inch, un, four inch railed guns. Um, it'll fit any railed or unrailed five inch 1911 that's based on a Colt or Springfield model. So it'll probably fit some Kimbers, it'll fit some of the higher end ones. Uh, it probably, it won't fit Taurus, it, won't, it might fit some Rock Island. It's kind of a, this is a long version of how you made the rig. MJ, are you that much faster than I am? So back over to this business. Here is the thrift press. Um, really simple, just a deck, four rubber feet, plumbing fitting, some mesh, and a frame. Uh, the other reason I went with this size is because this press will fit nicely into a U.S. Postal large flat rate box so I can ship this bad boy easily. So let me get it back over here and we'll talk about molds a little bit. 
since I can't finish the 1911 holster, I feel dumb, but I'll get it finished. I'm still gonna give it away. I will finish it out, test fit it with real steel, uh, and get it out the door right after Christmas. Um, Do you guys want to see the big vacuum former run? Can I see a show of hands? Who'd like to see the big vacuum former running in the live video? Shift gears and swift to Glock. Yeah, we can do that. I can swift, I can swift, some, uh, swift something else. Let me see what else I got. Ship it to me. Chip Ream, if you shared the feed, you're in the drawing. Uh, my heat press is still hot, still live. Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me swift press one of my. Um, here's a mold for a Glock 17 threaded barrel TLR one. I'll swift press that guy. I didn't see the show of hands. Who wants to see the big thing get up and running? It's a giant semi-automated vacuum former, Sean. So on the Swift Press, I'm doing one or two at a time. Down here, I'm doing eight at a time, plus some knives all at once. So let me go, uh, let me go power that bad boy up. One second. Make it lefty. Matthew Waltz, I don't make lefties. So, this is the big vacuum former. I'm going to go power it up and we'll warm it up. So it'll take a few minutes for this guy to heat up. Uh, it uses two by two foot sheets of plastic at a time. It takes a fair bit um, of time for all the heaters to warm up. You can see my control panel here that allows me to, uh... now that's right, Roy, no lefties. Think of the sales miss, Matthew Waltz. Think of the cost of tooling up all of my CNC machine tooling and redesigning it all left-handed. It's tens of thousands of dollars off the bat, which is why I just don't do it currently. Did we get left behind? If you're a lefty, I don't offer anything for you currently. It's nothing personal. It's just the, uh, the startup cost to tool up that many more lines for a smaller percentage of holster sales would not be a good investment of my limited, uh, limited time at this point. Haha, <laughs> sales missed. All three sales missed, says JT. So I'm going to use a slightly larger piece of breather mesh. I think it froze up. Doesn't look frozen. Doesn't look frozen from here. I'm not seeing it frozen. It looks to me like I'm still broadcasting. Maybe your lefty Wi-Fi over there is going bad. I 
I'm gonna change the plan a little bit. So last video I talked about nesting molds and I showed you guys these molds which were cut to nest a little more closely. I'm gonna go ahead and press this pair so you see what these can, uh, what this looks like. You need my address to ship this? Well, I will if I if you win it, Kyle. And if you win it, believe me, you'll hear from me. All right. Getting all this stuff back together. I got to adjust this frame down. I'm gonna go grab a piece of plastic. Good night, Jared. Thank you for stopping by. Are these level two, Roy? No, everything here is level one. All the retention is accomplished with the molding. None of it is done with active retention devices, latches or levers or any of that. If something happened to the mold wheel, I'd just pop a new piece of plastic on my mill and make a new one. No big deal. How late you make these? I don't understand your question, Tony. Hi, Tony Kettner. So I pre-cut a lot of my plastic into long strips. The time of day, bud, I, I often work, Tony, until 2 or 3 a.m. I'm kind of a night owl. It's pretty typical for me to be posting stuff on Instagram that's live from the shop uh, at 2 or 2.30 or 3. Which is not always the best plan, but it works for me. Zach Lockwood, there are three prizes. Prize number one, I'm giving away the small vacuum former that I built at the beginning of the video. Prize number two, I'm giving away a holster mold to a holster maker. And then prize three, I'm giving away a 1911 holster. Can I make one for a gag firefly? No idea what that is. Hello, Tamara Monroe. Thank you for loving it. Appreciate you being here. So here's my piece. Let me go ahead and throw it in the heat press. And uh, hope everybody can see well. Uh, Will, I don't, I almost never drink coffee after 5 p.m. So when I power through to 3 a.m., it's coffee free. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm getting ready to do this, OSG Firefly 22, oh, GSG Firefly, uh, I have no idea if that's cross-compatible, Chris. 
Uh, I would guess that it's probably not, even though the GSG is 1911 based. What do you add to the sizing on those, Andrew? Well, Brian Hicks, since earlier in the evening I had a screw up because I had a very tightly sized piece of plastic, uh, I just went a little bit generous on that. And my piece of plastic is, uh, for this double, I cut it at uh, like 11 by 18. I had an 11 inch wide strip and then cut it at 11, 18 or 17 inches. Uh, my molds are about 15 and a half, 16. So I left a little bit, about an inch longer on each end. M&P Shield, well, Andy, the, the holster I'm giving away as part of this live feed was being partially built in this live feed and is already formed. It's a 1911 holster. So uh, if, you, uh, if you win it and you don't want it, uh, I can certainly redraw for somebody else. Hi, Chris Johnson. M&P 40, I do offer M&P 40 holsters. Tony, they're on my website, henryholsters.com. Jim Vickers, my shop is in Bloomington, Indiana. All right, here we go. Hot plastic coming out. Right now I'm leaving the uh, leaving the vacuum former pump vacuum pump running. I got the cooling fan. Now I've got the cooling fan on. Goshen and Elkhart. Yeah, I don't get up that way that often, but uh, I've been there. Freaking awesome. Thank you, Sean Bowling. I think it's freaking awesome too. So the sound of the pump just changed. That tells me the edge seal broke, and then I can turn the pump off. Until that edge seal breaks, I want the holster shell still under vacuum to make sure it won't deform. So as soon as uh, Dan Stelnacker, it is a railed five inch. Railed five inch. So as you can see, on this set, there's a lot of excess plastic around the edges, but I already had this piece of pla this strip of plastic cut at that size, and trying to shave it down a little bit closer wouldn't have done anything for me. So uh, these I actually will trim in the CNC. That's why I switched, the other, one of the other reasons I switched to this. So you guys are gonna get the full, the full shop tour tonight. So I'm gonna leave that there. Um, cooling a little bit more. This is going to be close to warmed up here, and so in just a minute we'll be ready to run some test shells on. Ready to run some shells on here. I'm going to fire up the mill and put the fixture in for trimming those holsters. Hey, Alan Morrison, thanks for stopping in. Yep, those heaters are almost hot enough. Pour another two fingers of bourbon. Oh, Michael Hallam, you're making me want bourbon, but I don't drink when I'm operating heavy machinery. So I'm going to give this one more minute and then we'll throw a sheet in here. 
while I, and let it heat up while I prep the shells that I just formed over on the Swift press. I prep those for CNC trimming. So here's the workflow. This frame lifts up. Put a sheet of plastic in and then uh, turn it on to auto mode over here and we'll run it in just a minute. I'm going to get my IR thermometer handy dandy. The, uh, the heaters are not quite at full temp yet so I'm going to wait another minute before, uh, before I throw that plastic in there otherwise I'm going to risk ruining a 2x2 for a sheet and that adds up pretty quick. So back over here to the Swift press. These shells are nice and cool now. I can turn that off. This is how I get the shells out. That's it. They're out. Here is the holster plastic. Thank you, Tamara, for stopping by. Really wanted it till the end. Well, I do these broadcasts not infrequently, so stop in next time. All right. I'm going to pre-cut this guy real quick. my two roughed out holster shells. In order to actually mount these on the CNC, I'll have to drill a pair of holes in each one for the fixture. So I'm just gonna change the camera angle, drill these real quick, then we're gonna run the big vacuum former and then go over to the CNC. It's a busy evening. So once these two holes are drilled, these are ready for fixturing on the, on the CNC. Let's go ahead and run this bad boy. had the pneumatic power shut off and so the tray didn't go the first time so I had to quick reset. 
and go again. Yes, David, this is a mirror image of reality. This is my right hand. The anticipation, says Sean Bowling. It's exciting stuff. So while the plastic is heating, this large uh, vacuum tank down here is pre-vacuuming. Um, I'm going to leave you guys here for just a second and go and throw one of these on a fixture. So while this runs, uh, timer is set for 120 seconds, two minutes, or 128 seconds. Um, and the plastic, I don't know if you'll see from this angle, the plastic will actually start to sag in the frame a little bit. Um, but yeah, this thing is pretty awesome. You guys see that? Formed. Just like that. So, in the meantime, over here at the CNC, while that part, while those parts are cooling, I got the CNC mill warming up. And I have one of the parts already on a fixture, ready to trim. What do we have going on here, Tyler G? I'm ready to CNC trim a holster. So I just vacuum clamped the part in place. You know what, for this part, I'm going to actually reverse. So now it's showing actual orientation. This way I can see and aim through the window and show you what is going on here. Actually, why are we going to see and see cut gun slides, Chris Lopez? There's a lot of people already doing that. A lot of people already doing that. So I'm going to do a quick dry run here. Is that a bridge port? You make me laugh. Definitely not a bridge port. Quick dry run here so you can see the tool path.
So I'm running everything at slow speed um, so you can see what's going on. Now I'll turn it up to full speed. Everybody ready? Here we go. Ready to go to polishing. Yeah, there's still some orange and blue from the skeletons I was cutting for the filster, uh, but I was also with the scrap left over from that order, because we had some small pieces. I was also, for fun, cutting some orange and blue uh, AR mag carriers. So that was what the orange and blue you were seeing in the mill was from today, was trimming these guys. What's the edge look like? Some tool marks there, but it still needs to get uh, needs to get deburred. I always get some flashing here at the corners. It comes right off, but you still have to go around because the edges are really sharp. Yes, David, it is. Uh, this particular holster, this is uh, not the one. Well, typically these will not be done singly. This is a, an intermediate uh, test setup for some changes I was making. So yes, the goal would be to cut, normally I work in pairs, uh, just because I find the balance of time it takes to fixture to is about the same time it takes to cut to. And so I get a really nice paced workflow going where um, the cycles line up really evenly. As soon as the machine's done, the next one's ready to go in uh, and I'm not having much dead time there. So here's a whole stack of uh, MP Shield ones that'll be going in the mill tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be working Christmas Eve. Um, that's 120 shield holsters. It didn't take that long to make them. Um, get this out of here. This is really awkward with one hand on my camera. So you can see, I got a whole stack of these. Um, the other one was still warm, so I put down. The inside detail on these off the big former is pretty amazing. Really smooth surfaces. You can see every tool and mold mark. These are all the vacuum holes that allow air to vent through the part. They are in trim areas that get cut away. What's the holster for, Paul? Uh, these are Glock 19 holsters. They'll also fit Glock 26s, Glock 17s. Basically any double stack Glock in 9 or 40. Uh, and then this is, of course, the Filster TDI Fightworthy Sheet. Optimizing workflow is, is my goal, and I found that uh, pairs work really well for me. Hey, I'm back, and I'm reversed as usual. So, David, pairs have worked really well for me. Um, I'm going to go and power down this big former since I am not needing to make any more of those tonight. So it's a little bit of a funny workflow. Uh, in order to power the former down, I have to uh, vent the vacuum tank, and so I have to cycle the former once and then let it draw empty with nothing in the frame. So I'll put it on hand mode. These are all the steps with the former. The frame goes into the oven, the plastic heats, the frame comes out, the mold bed raises. If there were plastic in place, it'd be stretched over the molds. Then the vacuum pump engages. 
pulls your plastic down onto the molds. Go over here and switch the vacuum pump off. So it uh, shut off on an empty tank. And then when you're done, the, you know, the cooling fan will come on. Right now, cooling fan comes on, cools your parts. Once the parts are cool, then the machine applies uh, pressurized air inside the mold area to pop the plastic off the mold. So you'll hear it hiss here. And then that retracts and you're ready to pull the plastic out and start over again. So yeah, that's my cool big machine. It's pretty cool. It's pretty big. So I'll let that guy sleep, turn off the pneumatic. All the, all the motions are all driven with compressed air. So when I've got the CNC and this running, uh, I'm hogging quite a bit of air around in the shop. Uh, I guess since I've got one more holster shell to trim, I'll trim that one more holster and then we're gonna call it a night. And I'll sit down and start hashing through all these comments and uh, figuring out the giveaways. If you've recently joined, I'm giving away three things tonight. The first one is I'm giving away this little thrift press vacuum pulmon that we built. A vacuum line, frame, deck, and a roll of breather mesh, which is over here. If you're a holster maker, I'm giving away this HDPE mold for a 1911 five inch with rail. What was the question? Um, and then if you are not a holster maker, I'm also giving away a holster for a 1911. The holster that I made, was making tonight in the feed off this mold. Holster's not finished yet. It's right there. I will be finishing it up tomorrow or Monday uh, and shipping it out to whoever wins it. Where did I set that? Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's the other holster shell. Throw this back in the machine. Trim one more, and then call it a night. All right, I'm set the phone down for a second. And here we go again. Trimming away. So the cycle time on a pair would be roughly double that. That cycle time was uh, a whopping 22 seconds to trim that out and drill. So uh, the workflow there is pretty nice. Uh, works well for me. Thank you, Nicholas. I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you guys are new to my work, if you me tonight for the first time uh, my little pitch is I spend most of my time over on Instagram and so if you're an Instagram user find me on Instagram at at Henry holsters I post updates from the shop regularly how much did that CNC setup run you on point holsters over a hundred grand all told um, yes I programmed the CNC Matt Peterson it's my CNC I'm the owner operator programmer parts loader I already answered, Greg, over $100,000, over $100, all told, with tooling and vices and fixtures and everything. It's expensive stuff. This is a full-out vertical machining center. Yeah. It's a brother Speedio 700. Uh, it does a lot of work, but it costs a lot of money. Uh, so that's going to be pretty much it for the I really appreciate it, you guys stopping by. If you did not yet like or share the feed, before I close down, as soon as I stop the live feed, the contest is closed. Uh, if you want to still get in on it and win the mold or the holster or the thrift press, uh, like and share the feed um, right now. And then if you uh, don't already follow me on Instagram, please stop over there at Henry Holsters. Give me a follow there. Um, I'm going to start putting some of these Facebook Live videos up in slightly edited form on YouTube. 
so that people who don't like to use Facebook, which I understand, uh, can still access them. Uh, so that's the shop. That's what's going on with me. Thank you guys for stopping by. I appreciate your time. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to mention. Uh, I don't know if I'll get in another video between now and New Year's. Uh, Dan Stelnecker, they can come with a full sweat guard or a partial sweat guard depending on the preference of the user. I have options for both in the orders. Partial sweat guard covers about half the way up from the, from the top of the trigger guard to the slide, top of the slide, so leaves probably about that much uncovered. Full sweat guard covers all the way to the top of the slide. Both are options on my website. Um, if you're a holster maker, I still have some Swift presses in stock. They are still on sale. The code FAST40 will still save you 40 bucks on a Swift Press, and I will be in the shop and will be shipping things next week. So if you want to get one, grab one. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys very much for stopping by. Uh, the Thrift Press was fun to build. Hopefully whoever wins it makes a whole bunch of cool stuff with it. And uh, I will catch you guys next time. Take care. Have a very Merry Christmas. See you in 2017, if not before. Good night, guys.